Hey guys, Thomas here with Technovision and welcome to another Minecraft modding tutorial video for 1.16.4. Now, as you can see on screen, we will be making a custom creative tab in this episode, also known as an item group. And this is going to allow you to store all of your custom items and blocks into this nice, beautiful custom tab. Now I'm gonna be going through this episode in two parts. I'm gonna be showing you first a more basic item group that uh, just essentially stores an icon and a name. And then I will be showing you a more advanced item group that will allow you to structure the items inside of it in your own way and even add vanilla items into it. All right, so to get started, you wanna to come to your main class. Again, mine is named Tutorial, but you wanna to come to your main class, the one that implements Mod Initializer. And we are gonna be creating the custom tab inside of this class. You're welcome to do it in another class, I guess, but I would recommend doing it here. Uh, that way we can access it from our main class whenever we need it. So right before, right below rather, this, uh, this mod ID is where we're gonna put our first one. And this is gonna be the basic item group. So to create an item group, just like we did with our mod ID, you wanna create a public static final, but instead of a string, we're actually gonna create an item group object. So public static final item group, and you can hover over item group and make sure to import this class. And uh, we're just gonna name this item group. So item underscore group, I guess you can name it whatever you'd like. Uh, and this is gonna equal a fabric item group builder. Now this is what's gonna allow us to essentially build and create our item group. So uh, for the more basic item group, what you can do is just type dot build, and this will take in two properties. First one is gonna be an identifier, of course, so we can identify and name our item group later. So uh, to add an identifier, you just want a new identifier, and then we can throw in first our mod ID, of course. So uh, mod ID, again, because it's right up here, we're accessing it. Uh, comma, and then the name of this sort of item group. I guess uh, this is not gonna be a name that anyone is gonna see. It's just for you to set a path for like uh, the name in the uh, the lang folder. So I'm gonna name this general because this is our like main item group. So I would just name it general or whatever you think will be best for you to remember. Uh, and then the next thing we need to add, oops, is a comma. And we need one more parameter. And this time this is the icon. So this is gonna be the icon that shows up on the actual item group tab, the creative tab. So you wanna have a supplier here that points to a new item stack. And uh, whatever you put inside of here is essentially the item that is going to be represented as the icon. So if you wanted like a vanilla item, you could do items dots, and you could grab a vanilla item from this list. Uh, you could also do blocks dot, and you could grab a vanilla block from here. And if you wanted one of your custom items, uh, remember our like class here with our custom items is called mod items. So you would type mod items dots, and you would grab your custom item, in our case, Ruby. That's actually what I'm gonna do here, but I just wanna show one more time that if you wanna get your custom blocks, you can just like uh, with we did with our vanilla blocks, uh, except with our custom class this time, we can do mod blocks dots, and we can grab our custom block. So I want my icon for this main group to be a Ruby, because that's generally what we have in this, this basic mod here. So I'm gonna grab our mod items class, and I'm going to access our Ruby item here. And there we go, that will create a new item stack uh, using this item. Cool, so we can add a semicolon here, oh, right here. And of course, this can all go on one line if you want, but I'm just dropping it down uh, so that you can see it easier. But this would all be inside of the, uh, the build method here. So this item group is actually done. All we have to do is use it. So when you wanna use an item group like this, you want to in your mod items class here, uh, as you can see, whenever we create an item in the game, we uh, set the group here. And so far we've been using vanilla item group, so we've just been using the item group class. Uh, but you can actually replace this now with your custom item group that we just created. So to do that, uh, let's take our Ruby here, and we used to have it in the item group materials group. So we can just delete this, and inside of dot group, we can put our main class, tutorial, and then we can access that item group. That's why we made it public static, uh, final and we can double click it and there we go. So now our Ruby will be inside of our uh, item group in our main class. Perfect. So uh, you can also do this with your uh, your block items as well. So let's get rid of this uh, item group building blocks. And once again, we can just access our, our uh, special item group by getting our main class and then dot item group. 
There we go. Now, uh, you're not going to be able to do this with mod blocks because uh, if you mention, if you remember from last episode, blocks are not necessarily represented as items in the game. Uh, you have block items that are connected to blocks. So uh, you're really only going to be doing this for the block items and the items. So yeah, just keep that in mind. And now uh, your items are actually in your, your item group. So uh, all we have to do is just name it in the lang folder. So come over to your resources here, your resources folder, go to assets, I guess I should go to my main class first, uh, and then go to your main, your mod ID folder, go to lang, and open up that ian underscore us json, and uh, we just need to add another entry in here to name our item group. So the entry is going to first be um, item group with a capital G, dot, and then this will be the name of your mod ID, so in my case tutorial, dot, and then um, whatever you named your the path to your item group. So in my case, general, that's what I put here. Whatever you put for your path here, you just want to right click, copy that, and paste it in. Because again, like I've mentioned multiple times, this right here is your identifier. That's why we have mod ID and then general. So cool. Uh, once you have this uh, entry, you can add a colon and then name it whatever you'd like. So I'm going to name mine tutorial mod because this, uh, this item group is gonna hold everything from this mod, so only normal to, to name it that. Great, so once that is done, uh, you can actually come, well, I guess we should uh, file save all, and you can come up to the screen triangle and run the game, and I will see you in the game to test this out really quickly. All right, so we're inside of the game now, and if we go to our creative menu, as you can see, we actually have a second page now, and if we click that second page option, you can see that we do have our custom tab here. We, there's only one, because we've only created one so far, called tutorial mod, and of course, it does have our items in the order that we registered them. So perfect, and you can grab them out as normal, and they function just like uh, you would find normally in a creative tab. All right, so back in your main class, now that we've done that, you can stop there if you would like, but I am going to show you another more advanced way to make an item group. This one allows you to uh, you know, set the icon and identifier as normal, but it also allows you to add stacks of items in whatever order you want, as well as actually adding uh, vanilla items into your item group alongside modded items. So you can do a lot of really cool stuff here, and I just wanted to show you uh, just so that I cover everything for item groups before we move on. All right, so to make this new, more advanced item group, you wanna create a public static final item group, just like last time. And I'm just gonna name this one other underscore group, uh, just cause it's a second group. Uh, and this is gonna be, again, equal to a fabric item group builder. Now, instead of dot build, what we're gonna do is actually create the uh, item group and then we're gonna build it at the end. So you wanna do dot create for this one. And uh, inside of here, I'm gonna drop this down just so it's easier for you guys to see. Uh, this is gonna take in a identifier, of course, just like last time. So we need a new identifier. We can pass in our mod ID into it. And then uh, since this is a second item group, we don't wanna name it the same thing, obviously. So I'm gonna name this one uh, other, I guess, just cause that's what it is. It's a second item group. Again, you could do whatever you want as long as you remember it for your uh, lang folder file I, you know, naming scheme for later. All right, so now that that's done, we can actually bring this uh, up here because it's all that's needed inside of create, but you can keep adding uh, methods onto this. So one method I could add is icon.icon, .icon, and this will allow us to set an icon just like we did previously in the other item group. So uh, inside of here, we can add a supplier that points to a new item stack. And uh, for this one, I'm going to have the icon for this item group be a uh, enchanting table. So I guess that would be blocks dots enchanting table. There we go, perfect. Uh, now another thing you can do is you can uh, do dots append items. This will allow you to actually uh, modify the, the organization or the order rather of item stacks of items inside of your group so that even if you know uh your items are registered in a certain order you can still like modify the stack order from here without messing up anything in your mod items class so uh, to do that you can actually type stacks here and you want to uh, this is gonna be a consumer so we want to add some curly braces here. There we go. So inside of this consumer, we need to uh, just use this essentially. So this is the uh, the stack of items in your, your item group. So you could do stacks dot and you could add an item. So uh, I could add a new item stack. And this let's say uh, the first item we want is our Ruby block. So mod blocks dot Ruby block. 
All right, so there we go. So, so far this item group has one stack in it and that is the Ruby block. So the next thing I might want, and this is an order from the first, uh, the first little slot to the last slot. So uh, the next slot I would want, let's say an apple, a vanilla apple. So I would do again, stacks.add new item stack. And then I would grab items because it's a vanilla item dot apple. Whoops, uh, dot apple. And there we go. So now our item group has a Ruby block followed by an apple. And we can just keep going. So like I'm going to add uh, to this stack a new item stack, item stack. Uh, let's do mod items.ruby. And let's do one more, one more vanilla item. So I guess we do stacks.add new item stack and let's do glowstone. So items.glowstone dust. There we go. Cool. Uh, so um, again, all this is doing modifying the stack order. So as you can see here in our mod items class, we have Ruby registered first, and then we have Ruby block registered. So in every cr like item group that these are set into, it will always Ruby will always come first, and then Ruby block will come second. But uh, this will actually allow us to modify that. So uh, because we did this here, actually Ruby block will come first and then Ruby will be the third item added into here after Apple. So yeah, and again, it also allows you to add um, some uh, uh, vanilla items and blocks. And also I should mention this, uh, this sort of stack here, this stack order does not override um, the item group that you set your items into. So this actually allows you to set your items in multiple um, creative tabs. So this Ruby will be in our main item group and it will also be in our secondary other group. So yeah, just some things to keep in mind, some interesting stuff to play around with. Once you're done with all of this, you can come down here and you can just type dot build and this will make sure that you build the item group. The, the fabric item group builder will build it all add a semicolon and there we go. So that is our more advanced item group done. And uh, you don't actually have to do anything with this. You can use it if you want, but because we already set our stacks, there's no need to use this um, in any of our items. All we wanna do is just come over to our Ian underscore US .json. Again, it's in your lang folder. And we wanna create a custom name for this. So add a new entry. Again, this is gonna be item group dot your mod ID tutorial dot and then again remember our identifier here is uh, mod ID other so we want that to be reflected in our our Ian underscore us dot Jason so mod ID dot other perfect and we're gonna name this one um, additional tab there we go just for fun and file save all and now we can run the game and check this out all right, so we're back inside of the game. And if we open up our creative menu and go to that second page, as you can see, we have, of course, our original first item group here with our two uh, items inside of it. And then we have our second tab that we created, this one with the enchanting table icon. It does say additional tab in it. And as you can see, our custom order is perfectly set. We've got the Ruby block first, then an apple, then Ruby, and then glowstone dust. So everything is working perfectly. All right, so that's gonna do it for this episode. Thanks guys so much for watching. I hope you learned a ton about item groups and creative tabs, and I will see you in the next episode.